What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out WWE wrestlers who instantly knew they effed up bad. It happens. Sometimes you say something or you do something. You may accidentally injure a top star. And obviously, it's not on purpose, but it's a top star. It's someone that, you know, uh, the company depends on to be at these shows that sells the tickets and all this other stuff. You accidentally injure them. There's a good chance you may get in trouble especially with the old regime and vince mcmahon and, and company there was a good chance you injured the top star whether it was on purpose or not most of the times it's not on purpose there's a good chance you were gonna pay for it like you just knew like up oh, it's up for me so we're gonna check out some of them instances uh appreciate all the love and support y'all shown on the channel thank y'all so much for all the love y'all been sending me and let's get right into it man mistakes wrestlers make during a match or segment that can cost them dearly these mistakes can either lead to behind the scenes tension wwe management losing faith in that specific wrestler mm -hmm. or even from time to time the wrestler facing a violent backlash join us now yep. as wrestling me looks at 10 moments wwe wrestlers kofi was a victim of that unfortunately be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos number 10 braun Strowman stiffing brock lesnar yeah Brock Lesnar is considered by many to be I one of the toughest one. and most legitimate wrestlers of all time therefore it's never a good idea to be stiff with Lesnar in the ring and Braun Strowman found this out the hard way in 2018. Strowman took on Lesnar and Kane in a triple threat match at the Royal Rumble event and during the match Strowman got carried away and yeah, gave a uh, stiff knee to Lesnar. Stiff knee. Lesnar directly informed Strowman to slow the F down and then he proceeded to legitimately yeah. punch Strowman <laughs> right in the head. The punch looked brutal and Strowman evidently got the message as he and Lesnar never had an issue ever again and that that happens he gave him a receipt for those who don't know that's basically he gave him a receipt mid-match like he hit him with a stiff knee and he he hey, slowed the fuck down and hit him with a real punch it happens it happens and then you go from there that's so I'm sure he didn't get in real trouble that's how you, you they handled it within the ring you saw it you move on so Strowman offered some fascinating insight into the altercation during an interview with TalkSport where he mentioned, we laughed about it afterwards. It is what it is. Yeah. We got to the back and I said, hey, my bad. He said the same thing and we went about our business. We're both grown-ups. We, we both go. knew what we were getting into. And at the end of the day, we're both very dominant males and neither of us wanted to give in an inch. So in the end, we took an inch from each other. Number nine. Simple. That's how you handle it. <laughs> that's that's literally the best way to handle a situation like that you know all right cool you you hit me with a stiff shot i hit you with one back are we even let's leave it at that move on diamond dallas page failing to sell a comeback it's been well documented just how much of a colossal failure ddp's wwe run was between 2001 to 2002 DDP's first opponent during the respective run was The Undertaker. And whilst DDP certainly had the ability to hang with the dead man, one specific mistake resulted in his WWE run falling apart. During a live event matchup, it was DDP's job to feed the babyface comeback of The Undertaker. Oh. This is the spot which sees the babyface deliver numerous moves in a row, and the heel then takes several back bumps in quick succession. It's unknown why he failed to feed the comeback, yet due to The Undertaker standing in the company as a locker room leader, DDP was never looked at as a major player again. Damn. Shortly after this incident, DDP would be booked to lose to The Undertaker's wife Sarah yeah. on Raw, and after the feud had concluded, he would be moved dramatically down the card. Damn. Number 8, Paul London, smiling awkwardly. Whilst the on If you don't know about this one, yeah, he... You would think Vince would get mad at that, but if you don't know... He's about to explain it. Screen death and Mr. McMahon was supposed to be a serious storyline. One wrestler decided to go off script in the funniest way possible. This would be a mistake that would impact his career forever. Uh -huh. Leading up to the demise of Mr. McMahon, McMahon would make his way through the backstage area and walk past virtually the entire Raw roster. There was a scripted direction for the WWE talent to show no emotion. However, Paul London decided not to follow this direction. Yeah, bro. When McMahon walked past London backstage. Bro, he's cheesing. I get it. <laughs> He's like cheesing ridiculously hard, but he paid the ultimate ultimate price for that. That's kind of crazy. Age, he proceeded to deliver the goofiest grin ever. <laughs> what the fuck? It was a miracle that London wasn't immediately released following the incident. Yet yeah. he did alter his standing in the company. And McMahon and his closest confidants never looked at him in the same way again. 
Number 7, Wade Barrett and Dolph Ziggler breaking Mark Henry's pod. Mm -hmm. The 2015 Elimination Chamber match for the Intercontinental title is considered to be one of the worst chamber matches of all time, and a part of the reason for this is that a strong portion of the match was improvised due to a mistake. Yeah. There was a scripted spot which saw Wade Barrett throw Dolph Ziggler into the chamber pod, however both men put too much force into the spot, and this mistake resulted in Mark Henry's pod breaking. This created an awkward moment as Henry was there for <laughs> like, the match, uh... yet he wasn't scripted to enter at that exact moment, yeah. so everything just fell apart. Speaking on Busted Open Radio, Ziggler <laughs> discussed the dreaded mistake, and this is what the former world champion had to say. I think Wade Barrett threw me into Mark Henry's pod at the Elimination Chamber, and I went, and it exploded the door, and Mark is standing there, and they, get, and he is not supposed to come out for three more people. And I'm laying there with like, broken plastic on the ground and I just hear the crowds come up and just start rumbling for Mark and I go oh my god he's not supposed to be out here for 20 minutes I'm like, what the hell are we gonna do and I'm like laying on the ground and I just see a boot go past me and I go oh no <laughs> and uh we had the craziest improv on the fly 15 minute match with six guys Number six, Sim Snooker failing. Yeah, you can kind of tell. <laughs> but I mean, that's the best, you know, the best you can do in that in that situation. Obviously, it's like, oh, fuck, because, you know, now the whole match, the rest of the matches, you got to restructure it to make it make sense. And it's kind of hard to do that. Maybe one or two people could possibly pull it off a little bit easier where it doesn't look like that. You add in six, <laughs> it's a little bit more difficult to catch the undertaker sim snooker had one job at wrestlemania 25 his job was to pose as a camera oh and yeah catch the this crazy he spot too his signature dive unfortunately snooker completely butchered his oh, plans he the wasn't match, in the right spot in one of the most iconic wrestlers oh in all of wwe almost landing right on his head the mistake cost snooker his career as he will be released just a Damn. few months after this incident it was a total miracle that The Undertaker didn't break his neck. In WWE, are known for putting these wrestlers in these types of roles as they know how to deliver them safely, yet this clearly wasn't the case on this specific oh. occasion when it came to snooker. Number 5. The Miz Failing to Catch R-Truth A one mistake made by The Miz during a match on Raw in 2012 was so bad that The Miz received a stern telling off from Triple H. The Miz took part in a six-pack challenge match, and when R-Truth attempted a slingshot somersault, it was Ooh. The Miz's job to safely catch him. Well, the Miz failed to catch R-Truth, and Truth had a truly horrific oh. landing that could have resulted in a major injury. Like his head he hit was the... to the backstage area, and the concern... Bro, his head hit the back of the the uh, the mat, the, the padded ground, even though it's padded still. that The speed and the force back of his head hit that uh, the ground, the padded ground still... That's concussion protocol right there. Damn. It was so substantial that WWE were forced to issue a statement. R-Truth performed a slingshot somersault over the top rope onto The Miz, who was outside the ring. Although the aerial attack glanced The Miz, R-Truth ended up receiving the brunt of the impact, falling back first onto the floor. At that point, the referee decided R-Truth was no longer able to compete, and WWE officials helped into the locker room area. WWE officials do not believe any injuries sustained from the fall will keep our truth out of action. Sheesh. Of course, this was just a simple mistake from The Miz, but Triple H clearly believed that The Miz failed in his basic duties as a WWE star. Number four, Mr. Kennedy drops Randy Orton on his head. A yep, mistake in pro wrestling is sometimes all it takes for a wrestler to be fired, and this was the case with Mr. Kennedy in 2009. Kennedy had just returned from an injury in May of the aforementioned year, and during a 10-man tag match on mm -hmm. Raw, he would deliver a back suplex on Randy Orton. Unfortunately, Kennedy made the mistake of dropping Orton on his head during the suplex, and Orton was absolutely livid. His anger was supported by John Cena, and this resulted in Vince McMahon deciding yep. to let Kennedy go with immediate effect. Mm -hmm. Kennedy would then later claim that Orton jumped too high for the suplex, so as far as Kennedy is concerned, the mistake was Orton's error. Now, Kennedy had all the tools to be a future world champion in WWE, yet even his potential and his popularity wasn't strong enough to stop one simple mistake costing him his entire WWE career. Number 3. Big Cass, The Beatdown mm. In 2018, one of the names that Vince McMahon was high on was Big Cass. Yep. Cass would embark in a feud with Daniel Bryan, and this feud was designed to elevate Cass and ultimately was intended for Cass to show the world what he was capable of. 
On the May 1st, 2018 edition of SmackDown, Cass will be involved in the now infamous segment with a mini Daniel Bryan. Cass was supposed to simply hit mini Bryan with a big boot. However, Cass made a mistake that cost Jeez. him dearly. He would go off script and continue the beat down in a completely Damn. unexpected moment. This mistake made McMahon so angry that Cass would be released from the company. And this is what he had to say regarding Damn. his firing during the really? interview with Chris Van Vliet. I remember the day that I was fired. It was a meeting with Vince. Me and him and Mark Carano were in there for a while and we had a really good conversation. It was more a conversation about the performance was maybe touched up upon for a minute in terms of big cast, but that conversation was mostly about Will and Morrissey. I don't know why the future endeavors wasn't included. I don't look into that, but I thought it was amicable when I left the building that day. Number two, Vader Damn, misses a key bro, spot. So he was just only supposed to give him the boot and then start beating him up. And they was like, all right, man, we got to get you out of here. Damn, I, I never really looked into why Big Cass was released, but that's, I mean, he says that's the reason, potentially. Damn, I beat him up. You wasn't supposed to beat him up like that, the hell. Oh, and Shawn Michaels didn't have the best reputation in 1996. Oh, and at we the know. end of SummerSlam event, he decided to let one mistake cost another wrestler a chance at superstardom. On the show, HBK would wrestle Vader for the WWE mm -hmm. title, and in a spot in the match, Vader forgot to move out of the way following yep. an elbow drop. This Me. was a simple mistake, Stomped on and his HBK head. should have simply moved on and not drawn attention to the blunder. In a super unprofessional moment, HBK berated Vader mm -hmm. and kicked him right in the face. Following Jeez, this mistake, Vader's bro. push was immediately cancelled, and Vader would cease being considered as main event talent in WWE. That's crazy. And number one, John Cena forgetting to sell. WrestleMania 23 was main evented by John Cena versus Shawn Michaels for the WWE title. The match is considered to be a classic by many fans, yet he wasn't match. too happy with the quality of the match. It's vital that wrestlers sell in the matches, and when it came to Cena, he seemingly forgot to sell his leg throughout the match. Mm. This pivotal mistake angered HBK so much that he refused to shake Cena's hand following the match, and this was reportedly a legitimate shoot. The two would eventually work together multiple times in the future, and they would embark on numerous other classic matches. HBK was a perfectionist, especially during his second WWE run, and it was likely that he thought Cena's lack of selling hindered the match. But there you have it, folks. Yeah, you can you can see it right there, too, at the end. That's crazy. But I will say this. Their, 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 their rematch they had, I believe it was in, uh, in London. It was in the UK. It was overseas. I don't want to be incorrect, but it was uh, it was in the UK. The rematch they had on Monday Night Raw. Oh my! <laughs> that it was like a sixty-minute classic. That shit was great. That was better than the match they had at Mania. I'm not even gonna lie to you. That was a really, really, really good match, bro. That shit was fire, bro. So it that's crazy. I, when you watch it back now. He, yeah, he didn't really want to shake his hand or nothing. He was definitely upset about the not selling, you know. Some people are perfectionists like that, so. But comment down below. Let me know if you've ever seen some instances where you're like, you know what? That wasn't supposed to happen. You can definitely tell the wrestler may get in trouble and they know they effed up. Let me know down below if it wasn't listed in this video. But I appreciate all the love and support y'all shown on the channel. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one. Peace.